In my career, I've done work in almost every country in Asia. Bai is, a, is an infrastructure hub for the growth of particularly the branded sector on the residential side, and Dubai is, is a reflection of that. You know, people have the money and they want the quality. Sophisticated, elegant, aspirational quality. Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of CB Enemy Connect. Today I'm at a very beautiful place, a beautiful structure which is creating a landmark in the Dubai urban landscape. I'll be speaking to Matt, who is the general manager of Funds of BLD Residences. So let's talk about the real estate segment, the residences itself, and everything that Matt wants to share. So Matt, welcome. Thank you Thank so you much, much for joining us. So to begin with, I want to ask, uh, it's been an incredible year for you. Um, but before we get to that, I want to talk about your experience, your journey in Dubai and your career. Um, well, thank you. Um, pleasure to be here. And uh, I mean, my career has been now more than 30, 30 years, um, a little over. So I've been, I've worked all over the world, mainly Asia. Started my career in London. Um, I was lucky to obtain Get a role when I left university with, I did a real estate degree, got a, got a role with what was then Jones Lang Wooten and is now Jones Lang LaSalle, so one of the preeminent real estate services companies global. Um, and uh, I stayed with them for 12 years. I uh, set up, I went from London to Malaysia. Um, I went from Malaysia to India, set up the business in India. It's now more than 10,000 people. Um, and uh, went to regional office in Singapore and then we bought a business in Taiwan, which uh, I, where I stayed in Taipei for three years. And then uh, decided to move my career forward, having been on the service side to more on the developer uh, side. And I moved to a role with uh, DIFC, Dubai International Financial Center, in 2004, where I was the head of sales and leasing as a core role, but I had various other duties. Um, and then since then, so I've been in Dubai for on and off for 20 years. Had a short stint in Indonesia, in Jakarta, and also was in Abu Dhabi for a few years. Um, so during my time in the UAE, I, um, we had a real estate fund with HSBC. Um, we, I did an um, investment role with Evolvance Capital. I then was in Abu Dhabi, I was with Abu Dhabi Investment Company. Um, as a head of real estate, and in, um, uh, we set up a fund in, in ADGM with uh, Brookfield, so I ran that joint venture platform. And, uh, and then I came to uh, run this uh, amazing Wonderbill project uh, around one year ago. Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a vast experience, and I think, <clears throat> as you mentioned, what, 20 years in Dubai? Or UAE? Uh, 20 years, so I came in. I came to Dubai at, to work my first time was in 2004. I came here before, but yes. So 20 years, almost, almost to the day. But I should say that in my time, I mean, uh, in my career, I've done work in almost every country in Asia. Uh, I've done work in, as, to give you a sense, I've done work in maybe 50 cities in India. I've done work in every city in Pakistan, Dhaka, Bangladesh, you know, Colombo, um, Kathmandu, I've done everywhere in the subcontinent, but I've also done work in all over Southeast Asia, Northeast Asia. So yeah, I've been a lot of places. That's like an incredible bank of experience, I would say. Mm. Uh, but do you know, uh, now that we are sitting here in yes. this beautiful ones we residences, um, do you know, I want to know any particular highlight or project in the past years that has you know, created a remarkable, you know, distinct memory for you? So I think, uh, you know, I just maybe reverse back and say why well, I got into real estate and because it's tangible, right? And, you know, because you can feel it, you can live it and you can create it. And I think, uh, you know, that's, uh, that inevitably, every project, everything you deal with in a way has, leaves memories. So it, that's one of the beautiful things about real estate. Um, I've, I'm fortunate to have been involved with some very significant landmark projects. 
So I have actually been responsible for leasing the two tallest office buildings in the world in my life, Petronas Tower 2 in uh, KL and also Taipei 101 in, 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 in Taipei, Taiwan. Um, so yeah, not many people can say they've done two tallest buildings in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, in the, in, in, in the UAE, uh, DIFC for sure, was we yeah, were very much there in the formative stage of creating the whole master plan and, and ultimately I, t I was responsible for yeah, the sort of phase one, so all of Gate, Gate Precinct, Gate Village um, was all under my responsibility. Um, so yeah, some pretty amazing projects actually. I mean, in, in Jakarta, for example, uh, we built a Kenzo Tangi uh, office tower for a client, which is one of the most challenging Japanese architects. This is also Japanese architect here, um, different style. But yeah, I mean, you, you always, yeah, real estate, it always some, every, every project is different. So, you know, when we talk about real estate, uh, the Middle Eastern real estate market um, is booming. People yes. are coming. Yeah. Uh, you can see Saudi doing something, UAE doing something. Um, healthy competition. Very healthy competition. So, what's your take on the market? And um, what would be the thing that you feel like, okay, this is the reason why the market is standing out? Um, I mean, sort of macro and micro considerations, uh, but uh, I think uh, yeah, Dubai specifically has, a, has, a, has, has been a hub for a hundred years. You know, as a free port, you know, it's not a not, it's a recent phenomenon in terms of growth, but it's but the but the foundations were laid a hundred years ago. You know, it's a, it's been an evolution, just gathering pace very very fast in the last twenty years. Um, but I think uh, you know, the city states servicing a, a broader region like Singapore, Hong Kong uh, and Dubai. I mean, these are sort of the three, you know, have many of the three sort of similar characteristics, you know, good airline, good shipping, you know, good place for people to live and, and, and work and operate from the local, you know, throughout the region and, uh, you know, obviously good uh, legal infrastructure, financial infrastructure um, and, uh, you know, low taxation, uh, efficient cities, you know, that people aspire to, to work and I think Dubai is, Dubai just continues to evolve and really, uh, you know, reinforce its position. I mean, the geography that Dubai serves is, and the and the population in the hinterland of Dubai is 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 very significant, of course. And yeah, really, I wouldn't say no competition, but it doesn't it, it doesn't really have uh, in the in this geography, you know, a sort of significant competition. Sure, Abu Dhabi has a has a you know, is also a very well run city. Um, but doesn't have the scale of Dubai um, or maybe the aspiration. And Saudi is coming up, which is good. I think it's driving a lot of efficiencies and uh, and uh, and competitive uh, position. You know, um, Dubai um, I think has taken off since COVID because it did so well in COVID. You know, first and foremost. Um, but I think the Golden Visa uh, initiative has been really driven the growth. I think the world is changing as well. You know, people are becoming more international and, um, you know, so, and more aware of what other lifestyles or, you know, personal professional opportunities exist elsewhere. And I think, you know, Dubai has a pretty much open door policy. So, you know, if you're, you come here on your merit and, uh, you know, you, you try your luck and, and I think that's, yeah, that energy is, uh, is apparent. I don't know where Dubai will go in 10, 20 years time, but I see, I'm pretty sure that this will accelerate, not, not, not plateau. I think we're, we're on another, we're on another growth spurt like maybe existed 15 years ago, but I think it's, the sustainability is, is very much there. You know, when we also talk about Dubai, Dubai is also like luxury lifestyle. Mm. Now, I'm right now sitting with you in this very luxurious apartment. Um, I want to ask you is how does Dubai actually focus, emphasize luxury and how as one's beer is trying to deliver that? I, well, I think starting with Dubai, I think Dubai, you know, Dubai is, a, is an infrastructure hub in all respects, our legal, financial, you know, security, safety, accessibility. And I think, um, you know, the, to get persuade people to come here and build a business, build a life, bring a family, you know, etc. You know, you need to have quality is important, and and I think Dubai 
you know, under, the, understands that, you know, and, and sure there are different propositions, you know, in terms of living to different, you know, wealth status, you know, situations. But I think Dubai, uh, Dubai's always, you know, is always catered for, you know, has always had good attention to detail. Um, I think now though we're, we're in a different uh, era or evolved era of, um, you know, relatively kind of uh, um, sort of footloose uh, wealth in terms of, you know, people are um, you know, very comfortable to live in a place, that, you know, to move to a place that suits them and, and you know, that, that provides that lifestyle. And uh, so the growth of particularly the branded sector on the residential side in Dubai is, is a reflection of that. You know, people have the money and they want the quality. Um, and so the, I think, you know, developers here have had to up their game and uh, deliver that elevated product. And I think, you know, the product that, let's say, we have here in, uh, in the Wanzabil project is, is benchmarkable with anywhere else in the world. You know, and so, yeah, I mean, not just the residences, but also the hotel uh, in the complex. It's, you know, it's very much global standard. So, you know, you said definitely it's a very benchmarkable project. Um, I want to know more about the construction phase. Were mm. there any challenges? How is it? A challenging project. Um, again, Dubai is never shy to test the uh, you know, boundaries of gravity and science. And um, this is one of those cases. This is a unique site, right, within Dubai. Um, it kind of bookends this downtown area. It's one of the first things you see after you cross from the airport over Gahud Bridge. It's a very visible um, sort of entry point to the sort of what we call this sort of Sheikh Zayed Road kind of corridor. And um, yeah, I think the, the uh, it obviously sits inside the Palace District area next to the World Trade Center, very historical uh, landmark building um, from uh, Sheikh Rashid's era. And I think uh, it was obviously a strategic site which there was a desire to put to make a monument that really you know, sort of is another monument or another landmark for Dubai, like a Burj Al Arab or a Burj Khalifa. And I think uh, it's obviously very different. You know, it's a it's a it's a more urban, you know, architecture. It's uh, it's it, the massing is really the the sort of one of the key features, and the key feature, of course, is the link. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's an architectural landmark by a globally renowned architect, um, including a unique feature. You know, the, the link is a huge engineering achievement, um, defying really uh, the imagination. I mean, uh, um, it was a very courageous um, undertaking. It had its consequences, of course, in terms of the program. It was a challenging to deliver at that point in time to elevate the link uh, from ground level and to bring it up to the current height, which is 100 meters above ground. It's 230 meters long. It has a 67 meter cantilever, world, uh, Guinness World Record. It, um, if you stood the, the link on its end, and you made it vertical, not horizontal, it would be a significant building in its own right. So we sure. think of this project having two towers. In reality, we have three, three. and the third one is just happens to be horizontal. True. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think this building on a global basis would be you know, one of the man, humankind's engineering achievements. And this building also has a LEED certification. Indeed. So what is, uh, you know, how important is sustainability and uh, what are some of the practices that you are delivering? Sustainability is very important. Um, it was mandated from the beginning to be a key outcome of this development. So yes, the project has a LEED Gold certification we were very close to obtaining lead platinum. It wouldn't have been much more to achieve that, um, but uh, it was within our 
within our capabilities to achieve it. But the original aspiration was lead gold, and lead gold was satisfied. Um, and yeah, I think as a as an end, end user, that means you know an efficient envelope to the building in terms of your you know the thermal gain from the uh, external weather. Yeah, we're on central, we're on district cooling, so there's a efficiency there. We don't everybody, but most of Dubai is on district cooling. So that's not a unique feature in this town, but it it does mean a much more efficient uh, uh, efficient outcome for the environment and for the end user than having individual cooling. Um, and uh, we also just for your information focus a lot on also on the efficiency of the telecommunications. It's not not environmental, but we have a very high rating for our um, telecoms and uh, connectivity. So that's also important for us. You had to describe once BLD residences in four words. What would they be? Sophisticated, elegant, aspirational, and uh, quality. Great. And last question. Hmm. As general manager, what are your goals uh, and vision for one's ability residences? I think the, the key feature of this project, other than the architecture, is that actually this is um, one of the rare, very rare single site mixed use projects in the UAE and in fact globally. This is a massive undertaking. Um, to put it in perspective, as a from an overall built-up area, we're approximately the same, slightly bigger actually than Burj Khalifa. So it's to put it, which is the world's tallest building. So it mm -hmm. puts it kind of puts a perspective, right, in terms of scale of the building, the project overall. Um, so when I say mixed use, we have two hotels, we have 367 apartments, we have 300,000 square feet of office, 30,000 square meters, and we have around 10,000 square meters, 120,000 square feet of retail. Um, so in, in the UAE, we only have a couple of similar examples, both in Abu Dhabi. Um, in, the, in Dubai, we have mixed use communities, you know, the master plans, but we, but we don't have many mixed use buildings. And I think that's important because it creates a very different vibe in the complex, right? I mean, you know, people here will have a one and only and a Syro hotel on their doorstep that they can go and enjoy the facilities, amazing facilities and restaurant uh, offerings. Um, you, know, the, you know, people talk about live, work, play, but we are a live, work, play you know, proposition. Um, so you, you really wouldn't need to leave here if you, you know, unless you had a particular reason to. Um, so yeah, I think it's, pretty, it's a pretty unique project, very unique project. Thank you so much for your time. And My pleasure. Uh, it, it was yeah. lovely speaking to you. And uh, really, really appreciate you joining us on this episode. And I hope you liked it as well. I know, very much enjoyed it. Thank you very much for uh, the discussion. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you can come and visit our property. Thank you. Thank you so right. much.